Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is broadcasting live from Mexico, a country that is near and dear to my heart because I go there as often as I can to teach at a fabulous place in Tecate called Rancho La Puerta. She is a doctor who practices culinary medicine. Please welcome Dr. Fabiola to the show. It's very nice to meet you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Chef AJ, for inviting me, for having me here. Um, just like Chef AJ said, I'm from Mexico. Um, I live in Ensenada, Baja California, and I am a physician. My specialty is internal medicine. And like three years ago, we, we started um, at the Universidad Autónoma de Baja California a course. We named it culinary medicine, medicina culinaria. I work with my husband. He is a chef and he is a maxillofacial surgeon. He studied uh, um, chef in CIA, in the Culinary Institute of America in Napa. And then he went to um, Spain to do pastry chef and he's a chocolatier. And myself, um, we started with this culinary medicine training. Uh, I'm a member of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Yes, I'm a Mexican and I'm in the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. <laughs> and I did the training, I, I presented the exam and I'm now certified by the International Board of Lifestyle Medicine. And we love cooking. It's been a wonderful task uh, doing lifestyle medicine, plant-based uh, diet mainly. And we've changed our lives, our, the lives of our students, our patients, and we've improved our health. That's amazing. And so your husband is a doctor and a chef. What, that's quite a combination. I hope he'll come on the show sometime. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, he will. That is fantastic. Yes. And right now I prepare, well, I'm not a chef. So uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a physician. But I'm going to show you a small recipe you can do. It's a Mexican recipe. It's a salsa. And I have all my ingredients here. I'm going to start with the demo. And then I want to show some of the work we've done with our students so you can know us better. Uh, but since the, the tricky part for me is the kitchen, I will start with that. Okay, great. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the view so okay. that people can see both of your cameras. Come on, so there we go, I'll take myself off. That should work. Come on, there we go. Thank you. Now you're side okay. by side. Oh, Thank you. There we go. So Chesa J already shared with you the recipe. We're doing this salsa of pumpkin seeds with chili. This is my pumpkin seeds. Huh? So, for this recipe, you want to toast them. You can toast them in, in a pan or in a comal. You don't need oil for that. They have enough polysaturated oil. So just be sure when you store them, when you buy them and store them to be, to let them be in a dry place so they don't uh, become rancid. You, you can even uh, put them in the freezer. And we're going to use Chile guajillo and chile pastilla. So when you buy the chilies, they're like this in, 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 a, in, the, in a bag. If you can see, it's flexible. It still has a little moist. So we need to roast them. We're going to tatemarlo. You can roast them in the microwave. Yeah, just um, use the potency of your microwave to 20 or 30%. And just uh, go with uh, every minute to heat them. And you can toast them there, or you can toast them in a pan or in a comal. And uh, just you have to be present. It takes a little longer, and you have to be turning them so you can roast them everywhere. Um, it, it lets the uh, uh, smell and uh, the aroma are really nice. It can be a, a, a little spicy, don't worry, just ventilate the place, ventilate the kitchen so you don't have problems. 
I have asthma. Um, I can roast them. If I open the windows, I don't have problems. So you can do it. Um, and when you finish roasting them, you're going to obtain something like this. So this is a pasilla chile. It's already hard if you see it. Mm -hmm. And here is my huajillo chile. So it's hard. So first we're going to take off the seeds. We don't want that to be too spicy. Huh? The sea of chilies, I think, are my favorite. The chile, pasilla or guajillo? I love the pasillas. I love the sauces that are made out of pasilla. Okay. Well, chiles are great. And here in Mexico, take off the stem. And here in Mexico, we do a lot of recipes with them. It's like the base of a, of a, of a culture and our civilization. So take off the the seeds, you don't need them. Um, you don't want to throw them away because you can use them in other recipes. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one doesn't have. So I'm going to rescue this one. There we go. So now you want to crush them. There you go. And now I'm going to, I know what you're going to say. Why are you roasting them? And then I'm the adding water because I need to make the flavor and I need to add just a, like three or four tablespoons of hot water to moisten because I want to keep the flavor inside the water. I'm going to use, and I'm going to use all the water in my recipe. So we're not going to use a lot. We just want to moist them. Why do we need to roast them to free the smell and to give more, uh, give the fruity and the, 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 the fruity and the earthy flavor a kick? And that's what we want in our salsa. Now, this salsa is really versatile. Um, you can use them, you can use it with pasta or you can use it with tacos, uh, even with totopo. You can eat it with totopo, yes. So when we started culinary medicine in our university, we, we're teaching medical school, medical students, I'm sorry, medical students and nursing students. We started in 2018 with a course. I'm gonna put a little bit more water and leave it like, leave it there. Mm -hmm. And we started, we started teaching the, the students how to healthy cook, how to be, mindful about the food, but how, how to increase their time cooking in the home. Um, there's scientific evidence that shows us that cooking in home, in your home is healthier because you use more healthier ingredients and um, you have to, you, I'm going to keep, talking and doing the recipe. This is a little bit hard for me. I can do doctor things and talk, but kitchen things and talk is a little bit difficult. <laughs> That's okay, you're doing great. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm showing you the, the other ingredients. These are mil tomates. Um, you know them by the name of tomatillos. Uh, that's the name that the Spanish conquerors came out with. I don't know where they got it. But the, the correct name is mil tomate. Mm -hmm. So they're already chopped. I'm going to put them here in my recipient. And I was telling you, when we started the course with our students, uh, they didn't cook much in their home. And they said it was because they didn't have the time. Um, when we started, we 
taught them a few skills. We taught them mise en place. Mise en place is what I have here. I have my tomatoes. I have my onion. I have the pumpkin seeds already um, grounded. I have the spices I'm going to, to name. I do have um, garlic. and cumin. Here is my garlic. Here's the garlic. Yes. Chopped. Here is the cumin. Mm -hmm. The oregano. Is there a difference between Mexican oregano and just regular oregano? Um, well, the oregano is not really Mexican. It came with the Spanish conqueror in the now, now the China, the ship. Um, it's not really Mexican. Just like common, a bunch of spices came with the, with the, con uh, with the Spanish conqueror. This is my pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to place everything in my, here's the onion and my garlic. Do you or your husband teach your patients how to cook? Um, we're focusing right now in teaching the students, medical and nursing students, because we want the students to teach the patients. But we're starting next semester um, a clinic to teach the, the, the patients how to cook. We already work in, I work in a hospital where I see patients and I do culinary medicine with them, just uh, the theory stuff. The, the theory, the theoretical area, because I don't have a kitchen there. But they really like it. They, they love to feel connected and to feel that you, you struggle with the same things in the kitchen that they do. Um, usually when you go with the doctor, the, the doctor tells you, you are overweight, you need to lose weight, you need to exercise and it's better, it's healthier. And the patient says, okay, I can do that. How do I do that? I don't know. Go to the gym or um, go with a nutritionist. Uh, I don't know, but you have to do it. And we need to improve that because the patients need guidance and the physician is, the, is one of the best persons that can give the guidance that patients trust us. So uh, that's why we started teaching this. And when you tell the patient, okay, you don't have to eat uh, vegetables um, just in, in, in what we call it caldo, like in a soup, uh, they, feel, they feel sick. That's like sick people food, right? So when you tell them you, they can prepare vegetables in different ways and they didn't know that and that it tastes really good, they get really enthusiastic and they start changing. I do have a slide where I'm going to show you about the results of one of my more enthusiastic patients. And he did a huge change in one month. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm talking too much, I'm sorry. No, oh, that's fine. Uh, there's a question. Do you find, are you able to find organic spices in Mexico? Um, we do have organic spices. Uh, there are uh, stores where you can buy them. Uh, they're, most of the time they're imported, but yes, you, 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 can, you can get them. I'm going to uh, start using the, the blender so it's going to be noisy. Usually, 
clothing store, we have a brand site, I don't want to say a brand, but we do have availability of organic. And since this is a country where a lot of agriculture happens, we do have a lot of fresh ingredients. There's one ingredient I love. Its name is salicornia. Do you know salicornia? No, I've never heard of it. Okay, salicornia is a plant. It's so, it, it has salt. It it lives on, on the side of the of the sea. So it takes the. I'm going to uh, put the the chiles here. Just let me find my scapula. Here it is. Better. Here. You can see it there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it, 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 uh, the, the salicornia grows at the side of the sea and it gets that saltier uh, flavor. But it's, a, it's still a vegetable. Imagine like a asparagus, but a small asparagus. I don't have a, a fresh one now, but I'm going to use, I'm going to show you um, how salicornia looks dehydrated and it's green it doesn't have anything more it's just the 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 salicornia dehydrated and grounded so you can you can find it here in mexico the the name is salverde there's a huge uh, um well uh, they they produce this here and since not many people know about this, they export almost every, everything of this uh, salt to Europe. You might find it in, in, in the US, but it's really good. It's 100% natural. It has a lot of minerals and it has 30% the sodium, the same amount of salt has, and it has the same flavor. So I use this to start changing my patients when they, eat a lot of salt. I use it to, to tell them to, to start transitioning in, in less sodium. That I'm sounds great. Where do you get it? Can you get it in the United States? I saw it in Amazon. You can buy it by Amazon. Sounds great. And I, Paula wants to know, are you in Ensenada? I'm in Ensenada, yes. It's like two hours from here. South uh, San Diego. There's our salsa. And I'm going to... That's the last part of the grounded uh, pepita, so pumpkin seeds, comino, pimienta, pepper, cumin, pep and oregano. There it is. So we're finishing. I got a hat and prepared the same salsa we're doing yesterday, so you can see it already cooked. But now we're going to cook the salsa and we're going to put it in the pan. So I'm going to start there and we're going to put it right here. You don't need any oil. Just be careful to watch your salsa so it doesn't burn. And just keep moving it. It's gonna start doing a few bubbles in, in a few places. 
you don't want that, so move it quickly so it doesn't get burned. Uh, once heated, you can save it and then use it cold or hot. So while this is done, and it starts. Okay, so sorry. I'm going to show you a few of the slides I have. Great. Our work here at the university. Um, so. Oh. You could just put it in a view, a different view. Yeah. There it is. Uh -huh. Okay, so the disregard the degree of education each of us uh, has or possesses. The first step for health and nutrition is to create or increase the personal culinary skills. That's, that, that's what we saw with our students. When we, when we get rid of those barriers that hold us back, um, from home cooking, we're, we guarantee the moment of healthy and mindful eating. And it would be delicious and it will be pleasant and sustainable for everybody. Here in Mexico, we have some of the big problems that the whole world has and the US has. The, the, the statistics of, of the, 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 most, the causes of the most of the deaths in Baja California, in Mexico. And it's the same around the world. We, we still have a lot of, of work to do with diabetes and violence. Yeah, currently in Mexico, 70% of adults are uh, over, eight, over 20 years are overweight or obese. Imagine it's three for every four adults. And 70% of our population has at least one risk factor, hypertension, diabetes, prediabetes, obesity, and hyperlipidemia. And the, 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 burn, the burn of the disease study from the Lancet and the Eblasta Commission told us that the main problem is nutrition. It's how we eat and what we eat and how we cook it. There are uh, specifically um, a low, a low um, ingestion of fruits, low ingestion of seeds and vegetables, but we're eating too much salt and too much saturated fat. Um, we as doctors receive maybe four hours a week for 17 weeks of nutrition training at the university. And with the whole time we spend study and in the internship and, 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 and clinical practice, that's like 5% of our knowledge. So we need to do more training in culinary medicine. And we started in 2018, here is the chef, Jorge. And here are the students who started this, this course. And this, was, this of course was directed to um, students that were finishing school, but they were going to the, to the hospital to do their, their internship. You can see all the students here cooking and shopping vegetables. We did both uh, practical hands-on teaching kitchen classes, but we did theoretical scientific literature reviews in the classroom. And that happened in November 2018 to April 2019. Here is uh, the end of the course. This is, uh, these are some of the students that graduated. We started a course, an elective course. Um, that was just a, uh, like a diplomate, a small diplomate of 160 hours. But it was such a success that we started this elective course. So now the students have the, the, the option of taking this course and here are a few of our, our students cooking. You can see, um, you will see him cooking later, like three years later, he kept going to our classes and our presentations. Here, here we are uh, teaching a class on culinary medicine. Uh, you can, this is me. I was 82, 
84 kilo, kilograms. I, I was in obesity uh, grade one. Um, and since we started this path, we've been improving our lifestyle and our eating. And I've lost weight. Right now, I'm, I've lost the 20 kilograms. That's fantastic. Um, I'm living proof that this works and that uh, you can eat really yummy and exquisite vegetables for a long time, a long period of time. You improve your health. I was already struggling with uh, high, blood, high blood pressure and, and high blood sugar. And the thing that sh shook me, it was that I started having arthralgias, arthralgias, uh, pain in my, in my um, um, joints. Yes, I lost the word. Pain in my joints. So I thought, okay, I'm getting rheumatoid arthritis. I don't want that. So I did a few exams. I had my, my I had high inflammation and I went full with a plant-based diet and I don't have that pain anymore. And I've lost a lot of weight. At the beginning, when, when I finished my, my residency, when I finished my specialty, I was um, a senior and I, I used to tell the patients, you have to exercise, you have to eat healthy. And they told me, you don't know anything about that. You're skinny, you don't have, you haven't struggled with that. You don't know what it is. And then I went through all that path and obesity and all the problems. And when I told them and I was overweight and I told them you need to exercise, you need to have, eat healthier. Uh, they told me, um, what about you? You're not what you're telling us. To and um, now that I'm back, I'm, I keep telling them and I tell the story. So they say, okay, you're right. We might, we might try it. This is the same student that three years ago in, in the elective course, now he's teaching other students to cook. He's uh, here with Jorge, with the chef, and there's Melissa and Kiyoshi. We were doing uh, adobada tacos, and we were not using meat, we were using um, mushrooms, portobello. Here are a few other activities at the university where they, the, the medical students cook. And people love when a doctor tells you how to eat and what to eat. Um, here is the whole family enjoying uh, a dessert and, and quinoa. We, we prepare a dessert with barley and, and pineapple and, and quinoa. Here is the whole team. You can see Sally Cornia there. Ah, here is in the in the in the shopping so in the table the fresh salicornia. We have taken this activity to the community where we provide healthcare and we also provide uh, the the classes. So I'm going to move here, the and I'm going to show you as I expect how the salsa. How is the salsa? This is the final step. And you can eat it like this. Or you can put it in your rice, in your brown rice, of course. So we're going to place a little bit of salsa in the rice. Did you see it there? Yes. Mm -hmm. So just, there you go. And you can use it with pasta too. So here we have 
pasta, you can see it's uh, a little bit darker because it's not um, refinated pasta. It's, it's whole grain. And we have a, a we have it with broccoli. It, you can see it shine because it has a little bit, a uh, small amount of vinegar. Vinegar is good for diabetics and your microbiota. Uh, so you, you want to use that when you're cooking and you can use it in your pasta instead of pomodoro or maybe wheat pomodoro I don't know. So I'm going to leave this here. You want to see it. And in this class, you're, you're, we're watching um, th those, th those patients, they were in line waiting for, for, to go with the, with the doctor. And we told them, we're going to cook. Do you want to join us? We're going to show you how to cook healthier. And they said, no, thank you. We're waiting for the doctor. So when they started smelling what was going on here, these are lentils and this is chipotle, the people start gathering. We had to start pulling chairs inside the classroom because the, the, the people couldn't fit in. Um, these are another uh, uh, other batch of students we had in culinary medicine and lifestyle medicine clinic. You can see they're all in white. They gave their seats to the patients so they can enjoy the class. We have taken this uh, form of life, this whole lifestyle to even our our culture, our activities, our cultural activities in Dia de Muertos. You know, Dia de Muertos is a very special occasion for Mexicans when we um, pay tribute and respect to our best, to the people who died. And they did this tribute to the people who have died for infarction. Here you can see this student is working a lot in his computer with a Red Bull and Coca-Cola and eating for breakfast Lucky Charms and I don't know, that's, that's all alcohol, big coffees, um, and that's not healthy. So this is, uh, here it says infarto, that's myocardial infarction. And they were trying to show that this is not a healthy way of, of living. Um, with the, when the pandemic came, we had to stop cooking in, our, in the kitchen. And we did it virtually, we kept going. You can see I'm not skinny, but I keep losing weight. The, the, that's our, our evolution. We were teaching our students things from our house how to cook. These are a few classes from the virtual culinary medicine course. These are students. Here you can see what it's there. And they're cooking in their home, in their kitchen with the chef. And when they started changing, their parents were not very pleased because they were, they have to eat the vegetables and the way the students were telling them how to eat. It. So they started calling us to tell us, hey, what, what's going on? What, why do we have to eat so much fruits and vegetables? Uh, I'm not a rabbit. And we have to do a class for the parents to explain the benefits and what they could accomplish if they do a few changes. So here is a class with our students and their parents. Um, we asked them if they wanted this class. 90, we have 100 people to say, yes, let's do it. And um, the, this is the, the semester they, they're in the medical school and who they wanted to invite, 30% of them wanted to invite um, somebody who they live with, uh, a roommate. Some of them come from abroad to study here in Ensenada, so they are not living with their family, but they want the roommate to stay with us. Or some of them, their sister, their parents, their mother, their mother. Um, we started working with, with, uh, 
group uh, teaching teaching collaborative, uh, and we we went to this teaching teaching research conference and we started networking with them. And they knew what we were doing. Uh, Dr. David Eisenberg helped us, and we get to the Food is Medicine interactive map in their website. Here you can see most of them are in the United States, uh, a few, but the only Mexicans are, are here in Antana, and that's us. This is our, our, the photographs you already saw. Those are in the webpage. Uh, this is the, the, the research poster we presented in that conference. And what we saw when we did this uh, small study with our students is that they duplicated the time they spent cooking in their home. They started reading more the labels, 30%, uh, uh, they, they, the, 90% of them double the labels they used to read. They said the, the most important thing for spending more time cooking was because they learned cooking skills and because they learned how to cook and how to storage food. And they learned this meat and plastic. So they're more organized in the kitchen. And they spend less time. So now it doesn't seem like a waste of time or I don't have the time because they know it's important to them. And the one that made, made most of the, of the change is that they understood that eating and preparing their food, it's what guides their health. Um, well, this is a few of things that I, when we taught them, this is mise en place. Um, and at the end of the study, they increased their intake in whole grains in 64%. They increased their, uh, their cruciferous ingestion. They eat more fruits, 50% more fruits. And they diminished 57% the quantity of fast food they had and sodas. Um, we have been in touch with the PCRM and they have uh, helped us with classes to our students. This is uh, Dr. Aurora Leon and Dr. Joaquin Carral. They are Mexican. They live in New Hampshire. They do have a clinic, a lifestyle medicine clinic, and they do plant-based diet. And I haven't been in touch uh, lately with Aurora, but she was getting ready to run 744 kilometers. That's a lot. Here, here's a class from our students with Dr. Carral and Dr. Aurora. We had this big star with us at the university. You already know her. It's Ana Negron. The PCRM uh, contacted her and, and, and we did this lunch and learn with our students. This is uh, some of the virtual classes you can see here. They're wearing the chef um, hat. I know Jorge is not going to be happy if I say chef hat, but I don't know how to call it in English. In Spanish it's toque. And here we are in class, in some of the classes, we also encourage physical activity. So you can see I'm on my treadmill teaching, um, teaching CPR so now with the pandemic from the computer. So I was using this yoga ball to teach CPR. And we've done a few courses too. I don't know if you want to, um, Jay, since I don't hear you, I don't know if you're there. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I, I'm there. I just, I, I'm here. I feel like I'm talking too much. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I just took myself off screen so that we could see your slides. There's actually okay. a question from Susan. Where can one purchase the books that you mentioned? The books? 
That's what her question is. Did you mention some books? Because she said, where can you purchase the books that you mentioned? I don't remember what book I said. I'm sorry. Um, can, so you, can you maybe type the name in what you think you, what you heard, and then we can get a clarification for that? Yes, thank you, Susan. I'm sorry. No, no um, worries. Well, I keep talking, Ben. Um, this is one of the courses we did with a... Uh, um, this is a lifestyle medicine, Latin American Lifestyle Medicine Association. We're part of them. And we have been working with, with Harvard and with the European Lifestyle Medicine Association to start uh, lifestyle and culinary medicine in Latin America. So you can see Dr. Lapman, Dr. Beth Rage, Dr. Johnny de la Cruz, Rani Polak. Um, and here we are in a class with, we, we, we were faculty of this course. It was a diplomate for like six months. Here's a patient I was telling you, remember? Um, this is, this, 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 uh, the, the first laboratories are in April 1st. And you can see he had 568 cholesterol level. LDL, that's bad cholesterol, is 228. And triglycerides, they were 3,873. This is his risk heart, 27. At the most, you have to be at seven. Um, so, well, in the glucose doesn't, you cannot see it here, but it was in 700. And he didn't want, he didn't accept insulin. He didn't want me to give him insulin. He said, okay, I'm going to do anything you tell me. Um, can we do it in any other way? And I said, well, we can, but uh, you have to change. And well, we spent a lot of time talking about lifestyle changes. And these are his lab results one month, 42 days later. His glucose from 700 without insulin went to 200. They're still high. And I told them that we have to manage that. But he did a big improvement. Cholesterol is down to 194. LDL, the bad cholesterol, it says, even it says low. B is uh, bajo, low. Uh, it's not low, it's perfect, it's 35. And triglycerides, they were 3,000, and now they're 375. We still have a lot to do. But you have to think that this man did this in one month. These are um, a few of the courses we've um, implemented uh, working with other universities. This was with Universidad Autónoma, Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, UNAM. And we talked about how Mexicans used to have, ancient Mexicans used to have a plant-based diet. And we, we invited experts uh, to talk about chocolate, cacao, to talk about maíz, corn, um, and the way they used to live. In, how few animals they did eat and they only ate them when they, have, uh, they had a festivity or they have an important date. Uh, here we are in, in, with Dr. Uh, T. Colin Campbell in the Nutrition Study Center where we help them to give presentations and talk to Spanish speaking people in the United States. We did this course of culinary medicine with Morgan State University with Dr. Uh, Kimberly Warren. She's, she's, a, she's a psychologist, but she has her PhD in global health. And she was very interested in doing this course with us. So we did a COIL course. This is uh, uh, the name. And here we are in, in a, one of the classes. We used to have fun with the Zoom filters to make it um, more pleasant and fun. 
And we became with uh, a few activities like doing a health challenge. And this is one of the health challenge that one of both uh, two of my students from what I would say came up with that we did it with both sides, Morgan and what I would say. And this is a culinary medicine class we did with them. Uh, we uh, Ibisco tacos, um, tacos de flor de Jamaica. They're really good. And this is one of our latest activities. Oh, there you know, I, um, I see a question. What is the purpose of cooking the salsa if you're going to eat it cold anyway? Oh, to keep more of the flavor and the, and, the, and the aroma. Thank you. Yes. Oh, it, it tastes much better. And it, it, when you cook it, you, the people start coming to you to say, uh, what, what, what's that smell? I want that. So when you're struggling with people that doesn't want to eat too much vegetables, um, you have to engage them in other ways. And that's through the sight, through the smell. Um, that's the, the, you have to... <laughs> to look for other ways to do it. But in this case, uh, it's to enhance the flavor and the, the smell, yes. But you'd never and really cook, like a pico de gallo you wouldn't cook though, right? No, 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 no. That's a fresh uh, salsa, that's a fresh salad, yes. Although you can cook it with nopales, you would have to cook the nopales. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the latest activities we had. It was a, a joint collaboration between uh, a university, Universidad Nacional de Asunción in Paraguay, and our university. And we did this course to help people uh, transform them, their lifestyle. And that, that was the name, Transform Your, Your Lifestyle and Take, take, the, the, take Control of Your Health. And we had 1,000, and at the end it was 1,400 people who connected in that course. You can see here another star that's already been in your, in your show. Uh, it's um, uh, Jael, the, the, the wife of Dr. Lapsman, and she's a health coach and she's a cook too. And she helped us prepare this smoothie. She was giving her class here. And you can see here, we have 40% people from Mexico, 25% uh, were from Ecuador, I think. We had United States, Paraguay, Colombia, Ecuador. We have a lot of people here. Well, that's my presentation. Do you want me to turn off the, the camera on the phone? Uh, yeah, if you're not gonna show that anymore, because then we can see okay. you full screen. Okay. And then I, I can bring myself back on too. There Ready. we go. Yes. Nice. That's that's very cool. I really uh, appreciate the work that you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I would love to meet you and come down and see you in action someday. Or you're invited. You can come here to the university. We're we're hoping that next semester we can do in-person activities. So cross fingers. We're all vaccinated, most of all. Other than you and your husband, is there an interest in lifestyle medicine in Mexico? Oh, we're part of a Mexican college of lifestyle medicine. Yes. And at, maybe at the beginning, people thought in, in our students thought that we were changing religions or we did something and we were wanting to become vegan. We're not vegan. We don't eat audios and we don't eat ultra processed food. Um, what we want is healthier people, healthier patients, healthier doctors. If uh, the doctor is healthy, for sure he's going to prescribe a healthy lifestyle to their patients. So that's what we want. Um, but we also care for the climate change, we, for the sustainability of the world. Um, 
we don't have to listen to the World Health Organization. We have to to embrace this uh, sustainability objective and the best way of doing that, of changing your influence in the world is through your eating. If you choose more plants, you save water, you save land, uh, you save energy. Uh, and we will leave something else to our kids and our, for the next generation. Right. What's the youngest age group you've ever worked with? Mm, well, maybe 19 years old. Yes, because uh, they got into college at 17, 18, 18 years old, most of them. Mm -hmm. That's and so I'm an I'm an internist, so my patients are most of them are all over 50 years old. I I don't work with kids. Right. That's Although so nice. We have, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Although we we have to, I have to study when when I did a certification in the internal in the International Board of Life Medicine, I have to study about kids and pregnant women and all ages. I'm not a, I, 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 I could not subscribe to kids, but I could help in a few things. That's so nice that you have your husband on board with both the diet and the, and the medical part. Yes, yes. He, he's, he's such a brilliant mind becoming with recipes and adapting, it, adapting them to the Mexican city. That's really important because... Culturally, we're very different and we have to engage and, and change flavors. And we really love spicy food and, 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 and food with flavors. So that's very important. Jesse was saying that's so great that this food is medicine concept is being promoted so many other places around the world now. Yes. Where did you first hear about a plant-based diet? Oh, first. I think uh, we went to a conference. No, I, I remember reading an article from Dr. John Lapuma because I didn't hear it. I read it. I, I found his paper on culinary medicine. It was like 2016. And we started with giving presentations about the health benefits of a few ingredients. And then we said, well, why don't we start teaching them how to cook? But I think that was the first, uh, it wasn't about plant-based diet. It was in our medicine. And while we were researching and going to conferences and getting uh, in touch with Dr. John Lapuma, we found the group with Rami Polak in Harvard Medical School and the Lifestyle Medicine Institute. And then we went to another conference in Napa with Healthy Kitchens, Healthy Life. Um, and we got connected with Latin America. I think that, that was one of our strongest uh, networking activities, Latin America, because we're, we're different. And, and since even the United States has a lot of Spanish speaking people in we we correlate we identify ourselves with people with Latin living at the United States in the United States. Nice. Are there any vegan restaurants in Mexico? Well Mexico's really big. I just live in a really small town. Uh, we do have vegan restaurants, but uh, if you go to the big cities, um, Monterrey, Guadalajara, Mexico City, you do have wonderful restaurants, vegan restaurants, uh, vegan options, yes. That is fantastic. Well, we have to have your husband come on because people are really enjoying this because uh, that's incredible that he's a, a surgeon and a chef. So I guess he likes, yes. to, I guess he likes knives either way. <laughs> well, since he doesn't use the meat, uh, he does uh, other things. But he's really great in the kitchen. It's way better than what I did today. <laughs> well, that's okay. I think you did great. And you used my favorite chili, pasilla. I, because that's, you, know, you see, when you see uh, chilies, 
like we have Latino uh, markets here, but when they make the salsa, it, it, you know, when they already pre-make it, there's always oil in it and salt and sugar. Yes. And then you can see it when, when it's cold, you can see how it separates and you say, oh, I don't want to, I don't want this oil. Yes. It's, it's, it's a tip we have to take off. Um, they, we've always uh, known we have to cook with oil. We have to cook with meat. We have to eat uh, animal products to be healthier and to have the protein. Uh, we don't, we don't need that. So we have it's just education in time yeah are movies like forks over knives and other documentaries available in translated in spanish or with subtitles i think it has subtitles um i saw it with subtitles i think but it was in english um yes because most of those movies are in english mm -hmm. but you you can the subtitles yes yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Well, <laughs> I go to Mexico at least twice a year to teach at Rancho La Puerta. And, you know, I, I noticed that I've been going the last 10 years and it just seems more and more fast food establishments. The, the, the American ones are, are, are popping up. Subway, which probably isn't quite as bad, but McDonald's. And do you know what they call McDonald's in Mexico? What? The American Embassy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call it. So uh, <laughs> anyway, this is great. Well, thank you so much. And let's let's set a date. I'm hooking for December and have uh, your husband on either with or without you, whatever you would prefer. And, and we can see his, his skills in the kitchen. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I hope oh, you had fun. Absolutely. Anytime you have Pasilla, I'm, I'm interested. That is my favorite chili. Thank you, Dr. Fabiola, for the work you do. Thank you. Thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Jaden Loam. She is a 14-year-old plant-based YouTuber, and she's going to be making for the 4th of July a watermelon cake, which is made out of watermelon. Uh, adios, Dr. Fabiola. Bye. Bye.